I know my brother wouldn't just took his own life. I think somebody killed him and put him up under whoever's boat that was. There's something going on to so where someone is actually putting them in there. From Eric McGinnis in 1991 to Michael Williams earlier this year, mystery surrounds the deaths of these six African Americans, all from Benton Harbor, all pulled from the water. We've spent months digging through thousands of pages of police reports and autopsies, and aside from McGinnis, the victims have similar backgrounds, drug and or mental health issues, and they don't know how to swim. My brother, he was a minister at our church. He was a fun-loving person. I mean, he was the type of person always joking, always loved to, to make people happy. Michelle Travis was planning a family trip with her brother when he went missing. He was packed and everything. Instead, the day they planned to leave, she and her family filed a missing persons report. It was May 9th when Michael Williams was last seen. A friend dropped him off here, across the river in St. Joe, the intersection of Upton and North Upton Drives. It was just before midnight. I don't know why she took him over there. Months later, it's still unclear why. However, the police report shows at least rumors of a drug deal. Williams did have about $900 in his pocket. According to police reports, he told his friend, quote, if she never saw him again, it would be another Stephen Kraft situation. Kraft is a boy who went missing in 2001 from Benton Township. It was a strange comment that may be explained by a troubled mental state. Documents show he was bipolar and schizophrenic, but Michelle says it was under control. With sleep and his medication, he was okay. Williams made a few phone calls later asking for a ride home. His body, though, was found 20 days after that in Lake Michigan. All of that cash still in his pocket, along with his cell phone. The cause of death, probable drowning, manner, indeterminate. Nearly the same cause and manner for Willie Brand a year earlier. Nobody ever thought to check the water. Willie was last seen April 29th of 2017. He was staying in this home on Cyril Street with his cousin. Canvas Smith, his daughter, says Brand had some obvious problems. History of drugs. Alcoholic. And he had just found out no, he, he had sick. cancer. Mm -hmm. Police reports show that too, alcohol and drug abuse. And according to one woman who worked at the old Chase Bank, Brand may have had a history of falling in the river as well. She says he went into the bank wet a couple of months before he went missing, saying he fell in the river. His body was found in the river a month and a half after he went missing. This police report shows, quote, no signs of trauma or foul play. He has had a way tougher time in life than he was having then, and he made it through it. And I don't think that he killed himself. Then there was 39-year-old Alonda Brown. She was last seen at her apartment on East High Street. According to the missing persons report, she had recently lost custody of her children, and her boyfriend found what appeared to be a suicide note. Fisherman found her body three miles offshore a month and a half after her disappearance. Her cause of death was determined to be drowning. The manner, mixed, listed as a suicide on the autopsy, accidental on her death certificate. He was laid back, cool. He loved to exercise and plan for the future. Erica Davis was living with Dwayne Flowers when he went missing in November 2013. When she came home from work that night, he was nowhere to be found. I immediately started calling his phone, didn't get no answer. He was on parole and wasn't supposed to be out of the house. The last communication Erica received was a cryptic text message. Saying that I got myself into something and I can't get out of it. Amateur divers found Flower's body in the river three weeks later. The medical examiner's report does not show he drowned. Instead, drugs are listed as the cause of death. The manor, once again, a mystery. He would not walk that bridge because he couldn't swim. And one of the more intriguing cases is also one of the oldest. Timothy Bulldog Allen, a 44-year-old homeless man, was last seen in November of 2011, shortly after leaving Lakeland Hospital. His cousin, Jacqueline Perry, says he was having a mental episode. Because he was out of his mind. He was not his self. Bulldog also had a history of drug and alcohol abuse. Police reports show he was released from the hospital about 45 minutes after he arrived, but he was lingering in the parking garage. 
Eventually, security called the St. Joseph Police Department. Officers then escorted Bulldog to the Napier Bridge. According to police documents, Bulldog was last seen crossing the Napier Bridge by a St. Joseph Township police officer. Bulldog's body was found in the water more than a month and a half later. His death ruled an accident. But like the others, his family believes something else happened. We might have a serial killer around here.